Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. So are you ready to have to go to war with China over Taiwan? Because I think things are moving closer to that point. Um, I know that there's those that believe it's never gonna happen or that if it does happen, it's many years off. Uh, but things are starting to line up to kind of indicate that it's a little bit closer than you think. Yesterday, well, let's before I say this, um, last week um, the White House approved a $375 million weapons package to uh, Taiwan. Now, what was different about this, we sell them weapons all the time. It makes China mad. They threaten us all the time because we're selling them weapons. But in those sales, what it is is that we're allowing Taiwan to purchase weapons from the American companies that we purchase weapons from. So um, whatever company that might make missiles or make ammunition or planes or tanks or anything like that, Taiwan purchases uh, those from them. And so they, they put in an order and then they make them and then once they're made, they, they deliver the stuff. What was different last week is that this was um, weapons right out of our supply. So it's the same stuff that we're sending to Taiwan. Uh, out of already produced weapons that were intended to be used for the United States military, uh, we sent 375-ish million dollars worth over to Taiwan, or at least it approved of it. Yesterday, uh, Joe Biden has requested that Congress allow him to take the, the money that was set aside to be donated to the Ukrainian um, cause, I guess, um, and take some of that and start using it for Taiwan. So we're, we're, we're talking about the exact same thing that we've been doing with Ukraine, where we're sending hundreds of millions of dollars a week over there in, in weapons. We're just, we're just giving it away to them. Or we do this like lease program where, you know, <clears throat> we'll send you a hundred million dollars for a dollar lease, you know, that kind of stuff. And then if we don't get it back because it all got blown up by the Russians or you used it up, Oh well, that's what they're wanting to do with Taiwan. Why would they be wanting to do this if a war is years away? Just, just question that one for a second. If, if we're, we're not really that close, if, if it's not something that we really have to worry about because it's so far off, why would we be making this change now? I, I don't think it's because we're, you know, the, the, our government and the Taiwan, tai, Taiwanese government is, is prepping. I think it's because they know that there's probably something more imminent. We've been watching things heat up in China and in the Pacific. Russia and China are now patrolling the waters out there together, both of their navies. Um, there, there's been more and more heated activity and more and more threats from China. And then now we're sending stuff over to China that was that's been designated to be for Ukraine. Now, does that mean that we've, we're abandoning Ukraine? I personally don't think so. I don't think that we're abandoning Ukraine. I think that um, the West sees that that's probably not a winnable war. I think they see that. And so they're, they're going to try to divert the public's attention to Taiwan. Doesn't mean that they're not going to send stuff to, to Ukraine. Doesn't mean they're not going to support it. I, I believe we're going to start to see a, 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 a gradual shift in focus to where it's Taiwan, that Taiwan is the, the victim and that we need to protect and save Taiwan because, it, and this, is, this, isn't a, this isn't a lie, this is true, that you know, Taiwan as a nation and as, their, as a resource is more valuable to the West than Ukraine is. The, other than Ukraine is a great place for the West to launder their money, but Taiwan produces these little microchippy things that are very, very valuable. In fact, most of them that are produced on the, in the world are produced in Taiwan. And so if those stop coming, um, well, all of this Agenda 2030 Great Reset technocracy that they're talking about is going to be really hard to do if we don't have all those microchips. So Taiwan is, is much more valuable of a place, especially and also because of their, just their location. Um, in proximity with China. It would be, I'm sure that America and the West would love to have t Taiwan as a completely independent nation uh, so close to China. So 
we're probably going to see a shift. I'm going to guess, okay? I, I don't know anything more than you do. I'm just reading between the lines like everybody else. And we'll still be active in, you know, Ukraine. We may be become more active. We may be, you know, there's there's more and more talk of troops being uh, over there. In fact, just the other day, the, the DOD approved um, that, that American troops serving in Ukraine uh, now get hazard, uh, hazard pay, you know, combat pay. When, in, of course, we've been told all along that there aren't any troops in Ukraine, but actually there are, and there's observers, um, there's auditors, uh, which basically are troops that are supposed to keep track of what our weapons are being used for, even though a report a couple of weeks ago said that we've not been able to keep track at all of any of the weapons um, that we've sent over there. So, you know, they're doing a good job over there. I think they see that it's a, it's a, it's a losing battle and they don't want the American people to kind of lose hope. Also, it's just a, a cyclical thing. You know, you go back the last three years, you know, it's, it's the, the COVID and then the, the thing in the arm and, you know, the Ukraine and, you know, there's, it's always something. It's always something to, to get everyone's attention. Well, well, the Ukraine thing's been over a year now. And you can certainly see that um, it's, it's lost its pizzazz in the public's eye. It's, it's not even so much that a lot of the people are tired of it and don't care anymore. It's just, it's not popular, right? It's not popular anymore. And so we have to have something new. You know, there has to be some kind of new thing in the popular culture of the American people, something that, that, that we can rally behind, you know, whether it's BLM or, you know, the, the, the gay pride parades. It has to be something. And so it's very possible that Taiwan may, may be that very next thing, uh, since we're starting to see things shift that way. The problem is, is this could go very, very differently than what we've seen happen with Ukraine and Russia. While we are, have been in the past a trading partner with Russia on some things, um, Russia is predominantly a trading partner with, with Europe, with their hemisphere, um, and, and South America. And so sanctioning Russia, cutting Russia off, maybe hurts Russia a little bit, maybe hurts us a little bit. But, you know, both countries could live without each other. For the most part, both countries could live without each other. And I know I'm very, I'm speaking very generally, but, but that's probably true. China, on the other hand, is something different. While many of us would love to live without China and Chinese goods, and the fact is, is we don't. We don't live without China and Chinese goods. And to abruptly stop that, rip that Band-Aid off, would be disastrous to our economy. And as much as we all want to think and complain about the cheap, cheap Chinese goods that comes across, all the fake stuff, all the junk stuff, there's also actually good stuff that comes from China. Not everything that comes out of China is, is cheap knockoff, you know, pennies stuff that you buy on wish.com. There, there's actually good, you know, a lot of manufacturing equipment, uh, parts, uh, automotive parts, a lot of stuff. I'm not saying it's high quality stuff, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying there, there's more things than just the cheap dime store junk that comes from China. There's a lot of stuff that comes from China. Uh, our medications predominantly come from China. Uh, our, our, our medical supplies predominantly comes from China. It is so much of everything that we use comes from China. Now, yes, there's other places. There's Mexico and India and a few other places that we do a, a, an immense amount of trade with. But the point is, is that a lot comes from China. We're very tied to China. In fact, in recent weeks, uh, several politicians and people in government positions have said that it would be disastrous if we cut the umbilical cord, if we, if we decoupled from China. And if we're going to start a war with China, basically, by sending stuff to Taiwan and then pledging our undying loyalty to Taiwan, at some point we have to expect at least a reduction and possibly a full cutting off of our economic ties and trade with China. I know a lot of you say, well, that's going to destroy them. It's going to hurt them. Their economy is not in any better condition than we are. That's true. But... I have a little caveat there. There's a couple of things. Number one, China has been prepping heavily for years now. They they pretty much have the number one position 
of having the largest stockpile of most all materials, resources, rare earth minerals. You know, they have like the most steel stockpiled, you know, the most, you know, lithium stockpiled, all, all these different things, lumber, all this. So, so they are, plus they've been buying up gold, they're stockpiling oil and gas, and we aren't, we're not replenishing ours anymore. You know, Joe Biden drew it down to, you know, where it's scraping the bottom and we're not replenishing it. Uh, that was also announced this week that they've, they're they still not going to do it. Still not going to replenish the strategic petroleum reserves. Um, anyways, so China has been doing that. They have been, they've been building, building, building their stockpiles, which kind of indicates that they're preparing to potentially uh, go through a war and and potentially not have us as a as any kind of trading partner. So they they've been stockpiling. And then secondly, we have to remember that China hasn't been a a big bustling economy for that long. Um, you know, two three decades at the most. Plus, a good majority of China is still poverty-ridden, and, and and their their mentality of the Chinese people are different. And so, if China had to go through some kind of great recession or even depression, or you know, cutting off from supplies and things, I think the Chinese people, their culture, and everything would handle it better than ours. We've we've been the, the top dog for for a long, long time, longer than anyone alive knows. And remember, uh, and we don't have supplies, and the American people have no concept for the most part. I'm very generalizing things, but you know what I'm saying. The American people, for the most part, don't know how to be self-sufficient, don't know how to live on less, don't know how to to to, to endure struggle and stuff. That's that's just that's something that a lot of Americans, uh, maybe pro probably a, a great majority of Americans, don't know how to do. So if, if the same circumstances were presented for both nations, um, it's quite possible that China could actually come out on top uh, because the, the, it, in this situation, they may be a little bit more resilient. I know some of you say, well, Americans are just resilient and, and you're not, you know, how dare you call yourself American and not, not believe it. Uh, listen, a lot of things have changed in the last several years. Americans are different. I'm not saying that there aren't plenty that are out there that are tough and resilient. I mean, they're just tough as nails, absolutely. But there are a lot that are basically just dependent upon the system, that they, they're non-producers, um, they're, they're, they have no strength, no grit, no nothing, okay? That, I don't care if that sounds harsh or not, it's just true. And so if we find ourselves in a war, even at the level that we're seeing with Russia and Ukraine, where sanctions, heavy sanctions have been put on, that alone, just that, if, if that's all it ever is, could be very hazardous, could be very dangerous for the United States. It's gonna be hard for a lot of people. If we have to, if, if China and the United States sanction each other in a similar way uh, that we've seen with Russia, that's gonna be bad for the United States. It's gonna be bad for China, but it'll definitely be bad for the United States. China's already been dumping a lot of debt. Uh, they've been telling their banks to stop buying U.S. securities. Uh, they're, they're walking away from the U.S. dollar and they're the number two holder of U.S. debt. If they decided to just say, we're, we're dumping it, that, that's going to cause inflation to happen overnight, most likely. I mean, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be quick. Maybe not overnight, but it'll be quick because it would be like almost a trillion dollars just being dumped in the U.S. economy. It would be like the Federal Reserve just saying, hey, we're going to we're gonna print another trillion dollars out of nowhere just, just for fun. That's, that's basically the reaction. And then you would have a, a, a domino effect very possibly around the world where other nations that hold US currencies, US you know, debt say, you know what, we're doing the same thing. So the point is, is I'm, I'm probably being, you know, Captain Obvious here of telling you things you might already know that, that if we get involved in, in a conflict with China, even if it's not boots on the ground World War III, that right there, we all know where that's gonna go. We all know how bad that's gonna be. But if it's just something like what we're seeing right now with Russia and, and Ukraine and our involvement, that alone is gonna be very dangerous. That alone would be very bad. 
And so we have to be preparing that. You and I need to be doing the same thing that China have been doing for years. We need to be stockpiling resources for ourselves. You know, we need to be building allies. That's what they're doing with the BRICS nations and stuff, is they're building allies. They're building a group of cool group of people. You and I need to be doing the same thing. I, I would love as an American and as an, a patriotic American, and I'm patriotic to um, the American ideas and the, the Constitution, not to the government. Okay, it's two very distinctly different things. But I would love to get on here and say, you know, you and I as American citizens, we need to start behaving like our own government. We need to do what they're doing. They're leading the way by showing us how to be prepared and by, by you know, uh, you know, building good alliances and coalitions and, and strengthening ourselves, but they're not doing that. The American government is not doing that at all. You know, we're, 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 it's like we're purposely becoming weak. And I know a lot of you believe that. I kind of tend to believe that too, that there's a purposeful uh, agenda to weaken us for China. Like, like it's being done because China wants it to be done. And so it, maybe it's not, but it sure appears that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. It sure appears that way, that we are purposely being weakened from within. Um, this is not a good path for us to be down. We start sending more and more weapons over to Taiwan. I don't think China is going to handle it the same way as Russia has. I, I, I think Putin is actually as is, is, is evil as he's made out to be. And I'm not saying he's an awesome guy. But I think he's actually a very tolerant and very temperate guy. I think he's he's very uh, he he thinks things through. I mean, just the the way things have been done in this war, they could have they could have been much 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 more aggressive um, in things. And a lot of people within Russia have have wanted Putin to be, and it's like he's used a lot of restraint. I don't think the Chinese are going to do the same thing. I, I don't think it's the, the case. Um, in fact, there's I've seen a lot of. A reporting coming out of China that China actually wants Russia to be more aggressive in Ukraine. They want them to be more just just get it over with kind of thing. So the bottom line is things are probably not going to go very well for us in the future, near future, because it's it's becoming very overt and obvious now. And China also uh, probably the worst thing that you could do to China is uh, make them look stupid, make them look weak. Uh, that's, that's just part of their culture. Uh, they absolutely despise that. And, and that will probably get them to react uh, faster than anything. So you need to be getting yourselves ready. You know what to do. You know, stock up, prep up, do all that kind of stuff. For those of you that are still watching this video, I am running a special on the locals. You've heard me talk about it. It's the private membership area. You can go over there and you can see all the exclusive content, extra videos I put out every day and other content, live streams and stuff. Uh, it's its own separate free speech platform. Everyone that's on there absolutely loves it. So I'm running a special. If you go to thepreparedhomestead.locals.com and you sign up and you use coupon code 5 TPH and you sign up for a one-year subscription, you can get a one-year subscription for $25. $25 for, that'll be a full-year subscription for $25 over at uh, Locals.com, my private membership area. It, you, you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's, it's good. You can also talk and chat with other people and stuff. It's a pretty fun experience. All right, get your houses in order, folks. Prepare mentally, physically, spiritually. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.